Here we'll be looking at finding the arc length of a curve that is um, composed of some exponential functions. So we have the function y equals 1 half times e to the x plus e to the negative x, and we want to find the length of that curve on the interval from negative log 2 to log 2. Um, if you're curious about what this graph looks like, um, it looks sort of like a very steep um, parabola. So we're looking at this from um, negative log 2 to log 2. So we have some sort of uh, a segment piece that we're looking at there whose arc length that we want to determine. So we're going to start by reminding ourselves what our arc length formula is. So we know that um, arc length, when we're talking about um, finding the arc length of a curve y equals f of x, is going to be an integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus our derivative squared dx. Okay, so the first step that we're going to need to do for this problem then is to find the derivative of our function. So we're going to find dy dx, and we see that dy dx here is going to be equal to 1 half e to the x minus e to the negative x. Then we know we're going to have to square um, our derivative, so we want to find dy dx squared, so dy dx squared here will be equal to 1 fourth, when we square the 1 half, times e to the x minus e to the negative x squared. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and expand that out and see what we get there. So I have 1 fourth. Um, this is going to be, let me just write this out so we can see the in-between steps that we're going to be doing. So e to the x minus e to the negative x squared means we're doing e to the x minus e to the negative x times e to the x minus e to the negative x. So we have 1 fourth here. e to the x times e to the x will give us e to the 2x. Notice that for my inner and outer terms here, when I do e to the negative x times e to the x, with my exponent um, rules, that means I'm going to be adding negative x and x. So this is going to become e to the 0 and then minus another e to the 0. So I'll have e to the x minus x. And then I'll have plus e to the negative 2x. Okay. So let's see, this gives me 1 fourth e to the 2x. We know that e to the 0 is 1, so I'm going to have minus 1 minus 1, or minus 2 plus e to the negative 2x there. Okay, so we know that inside of our square root, I'm going to need to do 1 plus that derivative squared. Um, like we did in the previous problem, we're going through and finding um, what goes under that square root separately and then we'll plug that into our formula and look at how we can do the integration step. So I need to find 1 plus that derivative squared. So 1 plus dy dx squared here is going to be equal to 1 plus this 1 fourth expression here. Let me go ahead and distribute that 1 fourth through. So we have 1 fourth e to the 2x minus a half plus 1 fourth here e to the negative 2x. Okay. So we've seen already in the previous example and in this one that these arc length problems here have a fair amount of um, algebra involved for simplifying what goes on under that square root. So when I'm doing this 1 plus my derivative squared, I notice I'm going to have this 1 and this minus a half. I'm going to want to combine those. So we've got 1 fourth e to the 2x that I'm going to have um, plus a positive 1 half now and plus 1 fourth e to the negative 2x. Okay, so we know that piece is going to need to go totally under our square root, and we know that our, our main technique that we've been studying for looking at solving arc length problems um, involves trying to factor what's under that square root into something squared. So let's think about how we can take this 1 fourth e to the 2x plus 1 half plus 1 fourth e to the negative 2x and turn it into something squared. So we could try to factor this as is, but it may be um, a little bit difficult to see how this factors. So I recommend that we get a common denominator on this and then look at how we might be able to factor it. Um, so notice that what I have here is 1 over 4 e to the 2x plus 1 half plus 1 over 4 e to the 2x. Excuse me, this first one is e to the 2x 
all over four, then I have plus one half and then one over four e to the two x, moving that um, e to the negative two x to the denominator, making it positive. So it looks like I can do a common denominator here of four e to the two x. So I can take my first piece here, multiply it by e to the two x over e to the two x, the second piece by two e to the x over two e to the x, um, excuse me, 2e to the 2x over 2e to the 2x, and the last place we have our 1 over 4e to the 2x. So this is going to give me e to the 4x plus 2e to the 2x plus 1 all over 4e to the 2x. And now it may be a little bit easier to see how we can factor this. So looking at this me write it out in one more way so we can we can see how this is going to go. Notice that um, e to the 4x could be thought of as e to the 2x squared and then I have plus 2e to the 2x and then plus 1 and this is all over 4e to the 2x. So this is sort of like having some sort of u squared plus 2u um, plus 1 type of form here which I know would factor into u plus 1 squared. So if I write this as e to the 2x plus 1 times e to the 2x plus 1 all over 4 e to the 2x, I should see that that's equal to what I have. So notice if I expanded this out, I'd have e to the 2x times e to the 2x, which gives me e to the 4x. I'd have an e to the 2x and an e to the 2x middle terms, um, which would give me that 2e to the 2x when I added them together, and then plus 1. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put this together in our arc length formula. So we have our arc length is this integral over r bounds from negative log 2 to log 2 of the square root of, um, now what's going under here, remember, is 1 plus the derivative squared, which is exactly, whoops, exactly this, which we found is equal to that, um, which is e to the 2x plus 1 squared over 4e to the 2x. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to put right there under our square root. So I have e to the 2x plus 1 squared all over 4e to the 2x dx. Now let's go ahead and undo, the, undo this um, square root. Just remember that um, the square root of x squared is defined to be the absolute value of x, which would be x if x was greater than or equal to 0, and negative x if x is less than 0. So when we're thinking about this, oops, I have this my integral here from negative log 2 to log 2. The square root of um, e to the 2x plus 1 squared would be defined to be the absolute value of e to the 2x plus 1. And the square root of 4e to the 2x would be defined to be the absolute value of 2e to the x. But we're going to be able to drop the absolute value bars in the next line because each of those um, two quantities is known to be positive. We know that the exponential function is always positive. So I have um, my integral here from negative log 2 to log 2 of e to the 2x plus 1 all over 2e to the x. And I'm going to want to simplify that a little bit, so I'll go ahead and split that up into e to the 2x over 2e to the x and 1 over 2e to the x. So let's just see where that leaves us. So I have this 1 half then e to the x plus 1 half e to the negative x. And so now we have something where we can um, just apply an integration rule to each of those different terms. So I have 1 half e to the x, integral of e to the x is e to the x, um, then I'm going to have plus negative one half e to the negative x, since the integral of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. And then this is being evaluated here from negative log 2 to log 2. Now let's go ahead and compute what this arc length is equal to. So we're going to have one half e to the log 2 plus negative one half e to the negative log 2 minus one half e to the um, negative log 2 plus negative 1 half e to the negative negative log 2. So that's going to be the positive log 2 there. Okay. So to um, complete this evaluation, we are going to need to make use of some log rules um, for um, simplifying the log piece and for simplifying what happens with e raised to a log power. So remember, because 
Um, the exponential and log functions are inverses of each other. When we have e to the log a, that simplifies to a. And we also have a rule that says if I have something like r log a, um, that's equal to log a to the r. So where I have this negative log 2 or even this e to the negative log 2, notice that my log rule says that can be rewritten as e to the log 2 raised to the negative 1, which means um, e to the log of 1 half, where e to the log of 1 half is just equal to 1 half. So we have um, our arc length here is equal to 1 half, um, e to the log 2 is just 2, plus negative 1 half, this e to the negative log 2 is equal to a half. I'm going to have minus this 1 half, let me see, let me go ahead and distribute that, that negative through, just remind ourselves that we're distributing that through everything in the parentheses. So this will be minus 1 half times my e to the negative log 2, which is a half, um, and then I'm going to have minus this negative 1 half, times 2 there. Okay, so let's see what this evaluates to for our final answer. We'll have 1 minus a fourth minus a fourth um, plus, let's see, it looks like plus 1. So I have 2 minus a half, so that's going to be equal to 3 halves. So we found that the arc length for that curve um, over the interval from negative log 2 to log 2 is equal to 3 halves.